God is really that God is here with the blessing business. Uh, and, and he's able to just uh, do more than we've ever think of ask of him. I want to visit with you this morning uh, from the subject matter that it's not God. It's not God. Well. And I kind of derived at this lesson because a lot of times people in conversation are always talking about things that they're going through and situations that they're dealing with and they're trying to figure out what's what's going on in my life. Have you ever been there? Oh yeah. Have you ever been to a place where you 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 know you're talented, you know you have the ability, uh, you know you have the mobility, you know uh -huh. you, you're blessed beyond measure. Every one of you in here are blessed beyond measure. Yo, but preach. something preach. is wrestling with your spirit. Yeah. And it won't let you get to that place that you know inside uh, you should be in. You know that you are you dynamite. That, uh -huh. you are, that you are capable of doing some incredible stuff. Yeah. No doubt that if, yeah. if I came to you and asked you what was your game plan throughout the uh, rest of the month and the next month, you, you would tell me very succinctly that you intend to do thus and thus and thus. But for whatever reason, things just don't work out like you want them to work out. Uh, for whatever reason, there's always uh, something or somebody, praise God, uh -huh. uh, that seems to take your fire away, that seems to prohibit you or preclude you or even beat you to where you were trying to get to. And, uh -huh. and you become frustrated. You, your spirit's not where it needs to be. And, and, and you're wrestling with those manifestations of the enemy, the powers and uh, spiritual rulers, uh -huh. rulers of, and, and high places, and they, they seem to be able to just stop you from praising God like you need to praise God. And, and you blame everybody you can blame. You point the finger, and, and then eventually, sometimes you start to say, you know, is it God? Is it God? Maybe God, maybe God's not blessing me. Uh, I want you to know. I want you. I want to clear that up for you. Whatever we're going through, it's not God. Y'all ought to be happy right now. It's not God because God is a blessed God. Uh, God and his creativity from the very beginning of time uh, begins uh, the world by blessing man before the world was formed. The Ephesian writer said before the foundation of the world, God knew that we need a savior. God knew that we need something to eat. That's why the creation came before man. That's why he brought uh, land out of the water because he knew that agriculturally we need soil that could produce and be fertile that need to be moisturized. So he was preparing uh, the world for uh, his highest, his highest deed, his highest creation, which is man. Uh, and he knew man needed woman. And so uh, from the very beginning, he allows me to go through the process of things. And he looked at Eve and said, this is now bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh, and found great joy. God knew what we needed before we knew that we needed it. It's not God. Uh, God knows what you need before you need it. So if something that's taken your joy and got your head down and got you looking like, I don't know what's going on. I'm tired. I'm frustrated. I'm weak. I'm warm. I want you to know it's not God. It's not God. Uh, and so the, uh, the, the writer here in, in Isaiah, uh, I, I'm just talking to folk that, that want to have church this morning. Yeah. Uh, the writer here in Isaiah uh, is writing to his audience, uh, uh, to a group of people who cannot figure out why God's not blessing them. He's writing to a group of people who should be uh, uh, possessing and dominating and, and, and should be free, but they are in captivity and they are wrestling with things and they're trying to figure out what's going on uh, in their lives. It's kind of like sometimes, I don't know about you, but I can tell the truth of saying in the church, uh, sometimes I, I have to say to myself, God, why aren't you blessing me? God, God why aren't you blessing me? Lord, you know me, and I'm trying, Lord, and, and don't nobody else understand me like you understand me. Why is it that you, you're not blessing me? Why, why is it that, that I have to watch everybody else who's not even thinking about you get everything that they want to get, but why aren't you blessing me? Lord, 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 why is it you're not blessing my family? Lord, why is it I'm not as close to you as I want to be close to you? Why is it, Lord, I can't feel you sometimes? Why is it, Lord, why? So Isaiah said, I'm going to answer the question for you. He answered for them. He answered for us this morning. He said, behold, it's not that the hands of the Lord, it's not that the hands of the Lord have been shortened, that they cannot reach you. I don't care how low you get. Don't you let nobody tell you otherwise. I don't care what you're going through. God can reach you wherever you are. Man. The song that said in Psalm 40, verse 1, I was in a horrible pit. I was down low. I was in a deep, deep. 
and said, but the Lord heard my cry. He inclined to me. He reached me where I was. I don't care how deep you are in your frustration, your aggravation, your condemnation, whatever it is you're going through, whatever nation you're in, God can reach all nations. Y'all ought to say amen. Because he said, it's not that his hands are short that it cannot say, nor his arms have been somehow prohibitable. They cannot reach you. He said, but there's a problem. There's a problem, church. Are you here? Are you hearing me this morning? It's not God. Look at your neighbor and say, it's not God. God woke you up this morning. But in spite of you, God woke you up this morning. He knew you weren't even going to give him praise this morning, but he woke you up anyway. He knew you were going to sit in here with the devil, and you and the devil are going to sit here and say, we're going to try to stop folk from praising God. He still woke your devil and up, knew you were coming here to raise hell, and he woke you up anyway. If I could be God's soldier, and I knew some of y'all wouldn't go praise God, I said, Lord, I got this this morning. But he said, Hamilton, you too mean. I'm going to get somebody else. I'll wake them up. Y'all might say, God, God. It's not God. I'm telling you, it's not God. Y'all, 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 y'all not hearing me. He, he, he woke me up. He, he allowed you to put clothes on your body. You had somewhere to stay. That's enough to be able to say thank you, Jesus. That other stuff you talking about has nothing to do with God because God does not. God don't know how to not bless you. But God has put things in place. Hear me when I say this. God has put things in place that by the laws of God, by the laws of God, that we will not line up with God, it blocks our blessings. And no matter how I try to fake it till I meet him, and no matter how I try to pretend or invest myself in the other stuff, God says, it's not that I can't reach you, it's not that I can't hear you, my ears are not heavy, I'm not too busy, but you put a whole lot of stuff in between me and you till I cannot hear you. Uh, y'all all right? Y'all all right? Sometimes, sometimes I've been putting my job before God. Sometimes I've been putting uh, her before God, a him before God. Sometimes I've just been putting myself. Most of the time, I'm putting myself before God because there's stuff I want to do how I want to do it. And I've stepped up and act like I'm God myself. And God said, let me tell you something. I created you. I never hurt you. Patty, you listen to me. I never hurt you. I never leave you nor forsake you. But there's something that's going to come between us that ain't playing with you. In Jeremiah chapter chapter 2 and verse number 19 Jeremiah reiterates what Isaiah says and Isaiah 59 1 and 2 Jeremiah says your own wickedness shall correct you and reprove you that stuff you think you're getting away with it comes with a price it has a payday it has a payoff time and that stuff you think I didn't say nothing about I don't have to say anything about because your sin will find you out that stuff you thought you got away with in your parents place that stuff you got away with on your job that stuff you thought nobody else saw he said I have activated a law of motion in which wickedness will correct you and prove you I don't have to do anything to you God had not done anything to you but God will do everything for you but you got to learn to not put sin between you and God Amen. and how in the world is God going to die on Catholic's cross to eradicate sin to put sin in remission and then turn around and beat the life out of you every time you mess up. That's not the God that I serve. The Bible says that while we were yet in sin, that he died for ungodly folk. God knew I was going to sin before I was going to sin. But when you start messing around with that devil, and you start messing around with that sin, that sin has a payday, and when that payday comes, it wants to be paid in full. And God said, the problem is, you now, now watch this, this is literally the text right here. He, he said, here's the problem. It's not that my hands are short. It's not that my arms are can't reach. It's not that I can't hear you. But sin has separated you from God. Now watch the text move back to Isaiah 59, verse number 2. He said, watch, watch the text move from, from, from God's stuff to your stuff. And I'm going to show you this very quickly. He says, your hands are defiled with blood. Mm. So my hands are busy. Now, I don't know my hands busy. What, what y'all been doing this week? Hey, what you been doing this week? What y'all been doing this week? Hey, you been busy for the kingdom of God. Your hands are busy with blood. Your fingers covered with iniquity. Mm -hmm. So if my hands busy and my fingers busy, perhaps you put your, your, your lips to talk about Jesus this week. No. He said, but your lips been busy. Now, we were talking about God's ears and God's hands. Now he's talking about your hands. And he's talking about your, your fingers. And that's about your, 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 your lips. He said, you ain't talk about me this week. 
And when you talked about it, you didn't speak for me. You agreed with everybody else. He, he begins to talk about the human anatomy. In other words, I got so busy within myself and in sin that I have literally been too busy to get the blessings from God that God has for me. Somebody ought to say amen. My calendar has been full. I've been over here. I've been over there. But I ain't studied God's word. I ain't done nothing for nobody but for, for the kingdom of God, but been about myself. And while I was so busy, he said, I can even get my blessings because God said, you got too much clamor and noise between me and you for me to hear what it is that you want to say. I'm not deaf, but it's true. You send us some wrong messages. Y'all ought to say amen. Say so y'all ought to say amen. It's not God. God will, he's ready, he's able, he's willing to bless everybody in here. But I've got to be about my father's business. And i got to get my hands dirty for the Lord. Uh, I, I, there should never be a time to where my, time, my, where my personal time has excluded my praise time. Somebody say amen. There should never be a time where I'm giving more time to the world than I'm giving to God. Because it's not that God is going to do anything, but you're going to miss your blessing. When you miss Bible class, guess what? You miss your blessing. That was a blessing Tuesday night, and you miss your blessing. Praise God. Amen. Y'all ought to say amen. I know you will be this. I know I, I talk to you. You told me 10 all the time. Well, I got to. I got to. I got to. You ought to make a hit song called I Got to. I think he can sell by the meals. The I got you coming on. And then you have some of the young people coming out and rapping. Well, I got the one and the two. I got the, you know, and yeah, y'all, I'm just make up a song because that's all you, I got to. But you know what I got to do? I got to praise. I got to praise the Lord. Because when praises go up, blessings come down. And God wants to bless me. But I got to get my hands doing the right things. Got to get my lips. Got to get my, my mouth, my tongue talking about the right stuff. Because whenever I pack that sin up, it separates me. And the text says, he blocks it. It, 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 it stops by eating his ears from hearing. And, it, and he will not listen to me. Listen to the Bible. The Bible says, and I believe the Bible. How do you believe the Bible? I believe that whatever you're going through, God wants to bless you. But it's up to you to have faith in God and know that God will bless you. He's able to bless you. He's ready to bless you. How do you believe that God is ready to bless you this morning? How do you, how do you believe that you, you need to listen for God? You need to talk about God. You ought to give him glory. You, you sit here right now and you don't need a blessing. Why, if I need a blessing right now, you can stop me from praising God. I be giving God right now. I want God to know my hands are busy. Lifting my hands to the heaven saying, thank you, Jesus. I need a blessing this morning. Man. I'm standing in need of a blessing. Yes, I'm sir. standing in need of your help, Lord. Yes, I want yes. you to know my mouth is busy uh -huh. in the house of God saying, yes. thank you, Jesus, because I need a blessing this morning. Yes. If you need a blessing, you ought to talk like you need a blessing. Yes. You ought to lift your hands and you ought to say something. You ought to tell God, I need a blessing. Listen, neighbor, I need a blessing. Can I say it very quickly? If it's somebody real quiet, and they ain't giving God glory right now. You say, I know they don't want you to bother. They look mean. But they just, they, 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 they bought me this lie. They ain't gonna do it to you. They love the Lord. They want me to love the Lord. If you get one real quiet, you say, I need a blessing this morning. Say, I need a blessing this morning. Amen. Get your mouth out, oh, Lord. I mean, I'm trying to get through here. So, y'all, we all have to try to help somebody up here. You come in the house, we're going to praise God. Amen. I need a blessing. I'm not going to let the stuff I'm going through get me so preoccupied that God can't hear me when me talking about the stuff I'm going through. I'm not going to allow iniquity and sin to separate me from God. And I know the text doesn't mean that if I sin, God won't, because we all. We all see. Yes. God, God will bless you. And sometimes we mess the scripture up because we fail to look at the next two scriptures in which he tell them that you're just so preoccupied with the religiosity of the world and some privileges living in which you happen to miss the fact that you've excluded me from your life. You're so busy in your dynamic plan and you're trying to get her and get him. You have forgot about me. And it's come between us, and I've had to turn my face because I will not share you with anybody in your church. I will not share you with anybody in your society. I will not share you with other religious beliefs. If we're going to be together, baby, it's going to be me and you and the Holy Spirit. And if it can't be that way, I'm going to turn my face. Yeah, and I don't blame God. 
God. God's a jealous God. Somebody said, I don't want no jealous man. Well, you don't want Jesus. He's jealous. If he don't like you sitting by him like that. You thinking about him. You supposed to be, he don't like you sitting by her smiling and going, you ought to be shouting right now. Say, baby, you fine. You looking good. But I'm about to shout right now. When I get through shouting, because God didn't gave me all of this, I got to praise him for it. You know, every now and then I come home and I look at my wife and I say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Amen. He gave all this to me. Amen. I know y'all think y'all don't understand. If God gave you all of this, will you give him glory? I said, Lord, I got to shout this morning because God been good. Amen. Now, what I want to say I'm telling you, God wants to bless you. And we have to stay faithful. And so, number one, we find that God is able to bless everybody. But I got to make sure I ain't got stuff between us. What's between you and God this morning? What's between you and God this morning? Because it's not God. God has removed sin, and somehow we put it right back between us and God. What is it that's impeding and prohibiting your prayer life this morning? What is that stopping you from feeling the spirit of God? It's not God. Because God says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Let me verse number three. He says, there are none of you that plead for justice. None of you that are looking for truth. He was telling them literally, you're not even worshiping me right. You're not even, you're not, you're not so worshiping like everybody else. You're too busy out in the world, and now you think you can worship me anywhere that you want to worship me. Let me tell you something. We're looking at this great text. He said, none comes with justice, none people the truth. They trust in vanity. They speak lies. They ain't preaching the truth. They tell folk they can be saved in the way. Now you doing it. He said, and, you, and all this do is reducing other folk who lie about what I have said. There is but one church. There is but one church prophesied. There is but one way to glory. There is but one Lord, one faith, and one baptism. I don't care what everybody else say. God gave birth to one church. And if you're not in his church, then you're eternally lost and damned on the other side. He said, they've been speaking truths and online. I'm tired of this. And you just asked in this call, look at that verse. He's referring to how they worship him. And in the, the, the preceding verse, he is concerned about how they have lost faith in him because they put faith in everything else. People, we have some good child, but we need to put our faith in God. We have some good friends that are even good. We need to put our faith in God. Stop stacking up stuff between you and God so God can hear you barricading yourself with things and stuff and ism. Tear the walls down so God can hear from heaven and bless you like you never have blessed you. I believe God will bless every business on in here right now. I believe God will bless every college student with their dream. I believe God will bless every father in here. I believe God will bless every mother. I believe God gonna bless me on Tuesday morning. I believe God for every blessing He has in store for me. But I gotta stop building stuff around me and put stuff that's got my voice shut down. He can't listen to me because it's not God. It's not that God can't hear you. It's not that God can't save you. It's not that God can't reach out and get you. But you got too much stuff in between us. What you, what do you put? What do you put between you and God? What do you put between you and God? Sometimes folks try to put stuff, put you in stuff. Remember Daniel 3, verse 17. Daniel 3, 17. He listened to the word verse. He said, this may be so, O okay. King. He said, I'm telling you something. I don't know if God will save us. But if it be so, I know the God that I serve. He's able. He's able. Somebody I lose your name and say, he's able. And I, 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 I know you're in a fiery situation. He don't want you no more. She don't want you no more. She don't want you on the 15th. Amen. If you just wait, she'll be back. On the first and fifteen, they're right, sister. So who's paying it? Cause she'll be back. If you just be calm and just relax a little bit, she'll be back on pain the Uh huh. But I know you're some tough situations. But he said, let me tell you something. God is able to deliver us out of fiery furnaces. God is able. God's ability. It makes it keeps me in the mobility position to move toward Christ because I know God is able. I know I'm in a bad brother, you in a bad situation, but I'm telling you, God is able. Sometimes we listen to this word over and over again. And we look at Acts chapter 5, I believe, in verse number 39. We look at this wonderful passage, this dialogue between Dr. Gamil and folk who are trying to stop the people of God. He said, Let me tell you something. If, if this thing, now watch, if this be of God, if this be of God, you, you can't be it. Y'all missed it. If this be of God, can't be 
man be? Yeah. I don't care what it is that you're trying. I don't care how big the option. But if this ain't be of God, we can't be it. What, what, what is Luke trying to say? If, if what you're doing is tied into the will and design of God, you can't be stopped. Are y'all listening to me? Unless folk gonna fight against God. If you sit and you sanctified this morning and you really trying to serve God and praise God, he just told you it cannot be stopped. There cannot be any other outcome than God is going to bless you like that. If playing in the NFL is in the will and design of God, you can't be stopped. I don't care how bad the enemy try to put stuff around you, you cannot be stopped. If God intends for Uptown Church of Christ to explode and to ignite and to go into a church that's a leader in this community, it cannot be stopped. I don't care what the enemy tries to come to her, it will not, it cannot, it has not been stopped. Let's have them, they find themselves fighting against God. You got to believe that God is able and God cannot be stopped. I don't know what you're talking about. But you can't be defeated unless you give out, give out, give out, and give in. But I made up my mind that no weapon formed against me shall prosper. I have allowed it to prosper, and I have become unmovable, always abounding, first with the 15th today, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as I know that my labor, my labor is not in vain. Don't it feel good? I'm just talking for the Holy Ghost now. Don't it feel good to know that when you and God, you can't be stopped? There's somebody here that, that you got to a place that you know God had everything to do with that. Death couldn't stop it. Lies couldn't stop it. Mean folk couldn't stop it. Plots couldn't stop it. Underhanded attack. Every, the enemy threw everything at you in the kitchen seat. He might have made you move. He might have made you cuss sometimes. But you couldn't be something looking at me like you ain't cuss. Some of y'all are cuss me out. What do you mean? I'm too holy to cuss. Believe me. That he'll make you do some stuff, but you can't, the haters can't stop you. But you know there's some folk right now sitting around looking talking about, well, I hope, uh, when this out of teaching, I hope it, well, I hope it, hope it, hope it don't make it out. But you know what? You tell them, Brother Hilton said, just before I go out, I can't be stopped. Stop. <laughs> yeah, y'all I'm saying this, right? I'm just talking to you, you know what I'm saying? You can't be stopped. Why? Why can't I be stopped? Because as long as I'm lined up with Christ, everything in First Peter chapter 3, Verse number 12, for the eyes of the Lord is over the righteous. His ears are open to their supplication. But his face is turned against those that do wicked. I want you to know as long as I got God on my side and I don't let sin separate me, I cannot be stopped because his eye is over the sparrow. His eye is over those who are right in a right relationship with him. Do you get up in the morning confident that God got your back? If you know God got your back, can you raise your hand and say glory, hallelujah, and thank you, Jesus? Oh, praise God. But what about that person this morning? They're sitting here. And their problem is they know they got sin all around. And they just and, 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 and remember, God says, it's not me that's not me. In fact, I go as far as say, God, I'm not gonna put anybody in hell. You gonna sin yourself. God, God don't sin out of hell. You gonna sin yourself to hell. People say, well, brother, you can't tell people to go to hell. If they can sin themselves to hell, I can tell them they're going to hell. Because God's not going to sin about hell. He says in, in Jeremiah 2.19, your own wickedness is what's dealing with you. Get for me Proverbs chapter 1. Proverbs chapter 1, hold Joshua. I'm, about, I'm, about, I'm almost through. You've been in good church this morning. We're going to get out of here. I'm, 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 I'm almost through. You give me five, six, seven minutes. That way I'll cover. That way if I miss it, I got covered. I got great five, six, seven minutes. <laughs> We'll be lying in the pool. I'll be through. All right, now watch this. Uh, 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 Jeremiah 2 19. And then we said, I told you, asked him to Proverbs, what was it, 1? And what else? Verse number, I won't say verse number 20. But let's get that for me. Proverbs 1. In fact, go down to verse number uh, uh, 20, 24, 25. Okay. Proverbs 1 25. Watch this. Because I'm saying, God, God don't have to do anything. But he has a thing to pay for the wages of sin is death. Death is separation from God. The text says that there's a separation between you and God that's caused by iniquity, not God. God is on the other side. Says so if you remove all that stuff, 
So I'm like, hey, when we get through that, I want you to get up and put some stuff in the trash and say enough is enough. But in Proverbs, the Bible says what? But ye have said and not you said it all. All my counsel. And all this preaching. And with none of I, 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 I told you over and over, quit playing, but you just keep on with your own plan. All right? Read. I also will laugh at your calamity. Now, now your calamity is come. Uh -huh. I will mock when you when your fear comes. Now, now whose calamity is? He's talking about our calamity. Yeah, he said, your calamity. Who made the calamity in your life? You play with the welfare system all your life. And God woke you up and fed you and clothed. You lying on every application you felt at. You claim your kids not yours. You got you get extra money in. You got insurance. You do you 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 to turn California up. And I can't even say your name because we got a house representative here and she have to go tell it on me. I'm trying to protect her. Uh, I'm trying to keep her and so on. Uh, there's a government employee. I can't say it because they got to go back and do their duty and tell it on their sister and brother. So instead of saying your name. I'm just gonna say it's somebody up in here that speak the fraud the system and won't do right by God. There's somebody up in here, somebody up in here. And then one day, the people come and knock on your door and say, it's time for you to go to jail for the fraud and the welfare. Don't you fix your mouth and say, God had anything to do with that? That is your mess. You designed it, you profited off of it. You Slick, you got away with it, and now it's time to pay the piper. And God had nothing to do with somebody. I say, Amen. Yeah. I say, so I say, Glory. I wish I had a church house for people this morning. So I say, Glory this morning. Yeah. Amen. And then he said, It's your calamity. He said, It's your stuff. And what else does he say? I, 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 and I'm going to start laughing when your fear coming. All right, read. When your fear coming. When your fear coming. And, and, uh, and desolation. And your destruction coming. There's a wild whirlwind. When, when you're stressed and angry, you can't sleep at night, your hair turning gray, and you up here nervous, and you change smoking, he said, I'm going to sit back and look at you, because you want to talk.